The developments in the U.S.-China trade talks are moving at warp speed from threatening billions of dollars in tariffs, then pulling back, and a battle on Capitol Hill is brewing, a, a, a plan to ease sanctions on Chinese smartphone maker ZTE. Yet the president tweeted this earlier yesterday. Our trade deal with China is moving along nicely, but in the end, we will probably have to use a different structure in that this will be too hard to get done and to verify results after completion. Joining me right now is Oriscom, TMT Investments Chairman, Nagib. Sariris, uh, good to see you, Nikki. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Maria. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, we are so happy you're here in the studio with us to talk about all of the international happenings going on. I'm going to get to China in a moment. Let me ask you first about North Korea. You invested in North Korea. Yes, I own a cellular network there, and uh, it's been now nine years that I've invested there before the sanctions and before all this hype, you know. But my take on that is that there has been a lot of gestures coming from the North Korean leadership. He, he let all these three, three American uh, prisoners out. You know, he's dismantling his uh, nuclear site now today. And I think they, when they do that, they become very sensitive towards the other side. They want to see some uh, gestures from the other side. So I don't think it's, uh, it's a good thing to threaten while people are doing gestures that you are bringing back the tone of war or, or uh, trying to threaten them that if they don't. Uh, so I don't think, uh, you know, usually if you either talk or you battle. I mean, if you try to talk and, and have a stick in the same time, it never works. You know? So in terms of your own business there, you've had any issues? Or? No, no, I have all the normal business issues. You know, we have a problem with, the, with transferring the money out. They have a shortage of foreign currency, you know. Of course, they, we're under tight control. You know, we, our, our staff can't move around the country the way they want. They, uh, they interfere in the operation, you know. But I have lasted there 10 years, you know, so that's, uh, I get credit for that. It's yeah, you sure do get credit for that. So the president told reporters at the White House yesterday that we'll know very soon if this planned summit will go forth uh, between North Korea and the U.S. Listen to what the president said. It could happen, could very well happen, but whatever it is, uh, we will know next week about Singapore. And if we go, I think it'll be a great thing for North Korea. And you think he'll keep his promises? I mean, the fact that you founded North Korea's first telecom operator shows that you... You've done business there, and yes. you say that it's gone well. It's gone well in terms of the progress, because everybody said you'll never have more than 1,000 users. You know, we have like 3 million users now, or 4 million, which is 20 percent of the population. But I think this summit is not just good for North Korea, it's good for everybody, you know. I mean, when you threaten war and you have South Korea on the border, I mean, and these guys, I mean, any war will result in casualties at the first stand at South Korea, you know. So we should try with all our effort to avoid that, you know. And as I said, you know, I think some gesture from our side here will help. I mean, the guy has been, he met the South Korean leader, he, he looked very friendly, the meeting looked very friendly, he's let the American hostages out, uh, I call them hostages because I think was like that, you know, and also the fact that he's dismantling his nuclear plant. So, if you, uh, you need to, uh, you know, sometimes in America here they are insensitive to people's culture, you know, so in, in, my, in our culture or the oriental culture is, if you smile, I smile ten times. Yeah. If you threaten, I'll threaten ten times. I won't go forward. I, I know these people very well. They're proud people. So if you try to bully them, it won't work, you know. And, uh, you know, what do... And to threaten with a war that you know that is not easy, or you know that there will be casualties on the other side, on the South Korea. I mean, we're far here from North Korea, but the, what about the South Koreans? What do they feel so when they're threatening So you're the referring to the comments about Libya? Yes. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think it's... Uh, the timing wasn't uh, right. It's my opinion. I, I want to ask you about it, the Middle East, obviously. I want to ask you about Iran, because the president has now obviously pulled out of the Obama-era Iran deal. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo outlined 12 requirements for any new deal for Iran to avoid the reinstatement of these punishing sanctions. And they include stopping uranium enrichment, releasing U.S. detainees, ending support for organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas, and withdraw forces from Syria. Your thoughts? I think we should have had the, the proofs first that they violated the original agreement. I mean, before you cancel an agreement, you have to bring to the table uh, the proof, you know. And, and, and taking uh, uh, Vice President Netanyahu's uh, TV show about, about the Iranian, uh, 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 you know, not, uh, not comparing. I mean, this is America. You have, to, you have your own uh, uh, agencies, you have your own uh, way to, to determine whether these people violated the agreement or not, because then it's easier. Then everybody would, have support, would support the U.S. if they knew that the other parties are playing games and are not adhering by the agreement. But canceling today, the downside are two things. One is 
that you will shake the, the confidence in any agreement in the future that the U.S. signs, because everybody will say, okay, you might sign an agreement, and then the next day you will renege on it. Yeah, but we, it. They, they were saying death to America even as the, before the ink was dry. Okay, I mean, let's talk. You know, the second one is that you have, today we will have a, a break in the union between the, the Europeans and the Americans. We'll have to deal with that. You know, when you do sanctions, how would the Amer uh, European companies adhere to that? Will they be punished if they do business with Iran? And then what is the action of the Europeans when you should punish their own company. So I'm not against, you know, I am. I think Iran is one of the biggest problems in the area. They're attacking Saudi Arabia. They're threatening to wipe Israel off the map. You know, all this, they're interfering in Lebanon, in Syria, in Yemen. They've become a troublemaker. That's no, there's no doubt about no that. No secret, right? What I'm trying to say is maybe tactically we should have really exposed them to what they really are, that they're cheating on their treaty, that they're not. So when we cancel, it means that they broke the deal, not we, uh, we didn't just cancel. Right, I understand what you're saying. China, the president now is considering tariffs up to 25 percent on auto imports. Your thoughts on this? I, I mean, you've got this, big investments. How's this going to impact uh, the economy, global economy, and the investment world? Sometimes you need to do the right thing. You see, this, uh, the China has been taking the U.S. for a ride for very long. I mean, they, they've stolen in, uh, intellectual properties without really paying for it. You know, they've, been, they've closed their markets. You know, it's one of the countries that have never allowed anybody. I'm in a telecom business, as you know. They've never allowed any foreign entity to just even do an, a small internet or an ISB, you know, they, they, or even sell the equipment. You know, they're always favoring their own and they're closing their markets. So there should have been a wake-up call to tell them enough is enough. If you want to join the world economy today and you've become a power, you need to play by the rules, you know. So I think I support the president completely in this step. You know? ZTE did business with Iran, with North Korea. Z ZTE is really uh, worse pun being punished. As from my experience of in the telecom, you know, they're really, they're, they're the ones who went to, they were, were doing business in Libya, and they're the ones who do stuff like that. I mean, uh, but if the president wants to play this card against something else, it's fine. You know? so, you, so they should be punished, you're saying, ZTE? Yeah, yes, yeah.